Hello again. This is Math 2233, coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Maximum and Minimum Techniques in Higher Dimensions. As always, please be an active learner as you watch this video. By way of introduction, suppose that there were a business requirement that your shipments of product would be a volume of 8,000 cubic inches, and moreover, it was required that the packaging uh, had to be rectangular boxes with lids for the shipping. Now, uh, the volume is constrained and the shape is constrained, but the size of the box is not. So, to minimize packing cost, we could plan to minimize the surface area of the cardboard that we made the box out of. Now this is a very realistic problem and as you will see it involves multivariable calculus. But Before we return to that problem let's look at a situation where we're seeking a minimum. Here you have a paraboloid and the minimum happens down here. So you can see that the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y are both zero. So you see if I'm at a minimum the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y are both zero. But over here is a different surface and here you can see that the partial with respect to um, x is zero and the partial with respect to y is zero but this point is neither a minimum or a maximum because it's the uh, center of a saddle. And in fact, we're going to see this is called a saddle point. And what's happening here, it's a minimum for X, but it is a maximum for Y. So what this means is that when we're trying to do an optimization problem, finding a max or minimum, that the partial with respect to x equal the partial with respect to y equals zero is a necessary condition, but is not a sufficient one. You can recall this is just like the single variable case. The second derivatives, in this case the second partial derivatives, will yield additional insights and allow us to determine which of these critical points is in fact a maximum. Let's apply that to our introductory problem. So here's our box I'm calling this dimension X, this dimension Y, and the height I'm calling Z. So the volume was constrained to be 8,000. That means X times Y times Z is 8,000. And later on, I'm going to want to reduce the number of variables, so I'm going to solve for Z. And if I solve for Z, Z was equal to 8,000 over XY. So I am using this, but I want to minimize the surface area. Now since I've done a complete box here there are six faces and the faces are uh, x and y that's the bottom and the top so I have 2xy in area. I have 2xz that's this front face and the back face and then I have 2yz, which is this side and this side. So that's the surface area that I want to uh, minimize. So what I'm doing is this is my f of xy. And you might say, well, yes, but it has x, y, and z in it. But I'm going to use this to make this into an equation of two variables. So f of xy is going to be 2xy was fine. This was 2xz, but I'm going to substitute this in. And this was 2yz, and I'm going to substitute this in again for z. And I am able to then simplify. The x's will cancel here and the y's will cancel here. So this simplifies to f of xy equals 2xy plus 16,000 over y plus 16,000 over x. Make sure you're following all these calculations. So then I'm going to find the critical points. I will take the partial with respect to x and I get this expression. Make sure you follow these calculations. And I'll take the partial with respect to y and get this expression. Now I set both of those equal to zero. 
But when I set this one equal to zero, I can solve for y. So y, solving for that, y is actually equal to um, 8,000 over x squared. So then I'm going to take that value for y and substitute it into this equation, squaring that, and then I will end up with this when I simplify. So this is x times 1 minus x cubed over 8,000 is equal to 0. Make sure you follow these algebra calculations. Now, if x is z, this could be equal to 0 for x equal to 0, but if x equals 0, you don't have a box. So we're going to say x is not 0, so that means the other factor has to be 0. That means x cubed is 8,000. That means x is 20. But if I know what x is, uh, I can figure out what y and z are from the equation uh, that is right up here. And so y is 8,000 over... Uh, 20 squared, and I get um, uh, y is 20 and z is 20. So what I find out is I minimize the surface area if I have a cubic box. Now, as we saw then, we were using uh, concepts that we talked about in Calculus 1. And, uh, and we were using that, though, to find absolute maximums, and there, or excuse me, absolute maximums, but we can have local maximums, too, and absolute minimums. And we're going to talk about all those within these lectures. And here is the definition of a local maximum. A local maximum is found at AB if F of AB is bigger than everything or equal to everything uh, near it. And similarly, a local minimum is if f of x is bigger than, um, f of ab is less than anything that is near it. So those definitions line up with what we had before. And uh, we did have the uh, necessary conditions, and that says if f has a local maximum or minimum at a, b, then the first order partials must exist there and both have to equal zero. So you see, this gives us the critical numbers. And in fact, we'll define these to be uh, critical points later. But just like f prime of x uh, could be uh, uh, equal to zero, but you didn't have a max or min there, the same thing can be true here. Now, notice that f sub x equal to 0 and f sub y equal to 0 is the same thing as saying that the gradient of f evaluated at a, b is equal to 0. So this is going to be a step one in solving these optimization problems. We find places where the gradient is equal to 0. Okay, and here is a proof of that. Um, and it, uh, it, 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 you really can do it uh, one variable at a time, as we often do. We define one variable to have um, the, um, uh, the y fixed and another variable uh, function to have the x fixed, and we, we conclude that from what you knew from calculus 1. Now, we define a point AB to be a critical point or stationary point of f if the first partials are equal to 0 or if one or both of those partials does not exist. And theorem that we talked up here says f has a local maximum or a minimum. Uh, then you must happen at a critical point. OK, so let's do an example. So here is an f of xy, x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y plus 14. We take the partial with respect to x, 2x minus 2. The partial with respect to y, 2y minus 6. Set those equal to 0 and solve. That tells us that x is 1 and y is 3. Sometimes this is harder to solve than here, but that was an easy one to solve. So the only critical point is x is 1 and y is 3. That is 1, 3. But what we can do is we can complete the square here. And we're completing the square on uh, x, getting x minus 1 squared, and completing the square on y. That's y minus 3 whole squared. And both of these are bigger than 0. So we see that the minimum 
actually does happen at 4 because f of xy is this. So 1, 3 actually does give us the minimum, and the minimum value is 4. And there's the picture that we would have accompanying this. Now we're going to come up with easier ways to solve this than completing the square, but you should understand what we did to complete the square here. And here's a problem where you can uh, do this. So try to find the extreme values of f of xy equal y squared minus x squared. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, we're going to take the um, first partial with respect to x and the first partial with respect to y, and we'll get the only critical uh, point is 0, 0. But when we look at that uh, 0, 0, we're going to see that it's neither a max nor a min because whenever y is 0, it's negative on one side of it and it's positive on the other side. And the same, same thing is true for uh, 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 x as well. So it can't be an extreme value. So it has no extreme value. Now, what really is happening here is that the graph of this looks like this, and this is one of those saddle points. We have a minimum with respect to x and a maximum with respect to, um, excuse me, we have a minimum with respect to y, and we have a maximum with respect to uh, x at the point 0, 0. So it's not an extreme point, it's a saddle point. Now saddle points do exist in the real world. Look at this guy on a mountain trail who's walking uh, this way. That's the low point, but there's another trail that could be coming up this way, and that's a high point. So you see uh, this is what we will call a saddle point. And again, we're just developing examples in terminology. So this is the second derivative test. So the first thing is you do, you find the critical numbers, but then this is called the second derivative test. So suppose the second partials are continuous on a disk with center AB, and suppose that the first partials both are zero. That means AB is a critical point of F. Then we define an expression D equaling, this is the second partial of F with respect to X times the second partial with respect to y of f minus, this is f x y, the cross partial evaluated a b. Now this is a very complicated expression, but this is the one you have to deal with. So d is the second derivative um, component. Now if d is bigger than zero, evaluated at that critical point a b, and if f x x at a b is bigger than zero, then this is a local minimum. If d is bigger than 0 and fxx at ab is less than 0, then that's a local maximum. So notice you get a local minimum or a local maximum whenever d is bigger than 0. If d is less than 0, then it's not a local maximum or minimum. And uh, that means uh, that uh, we're going to have a, uh, a saddle point. And uh, if d equals 0, actually, it's the test fails. Uh, if d equals 0, the test fails because we don't have this. This would have been a, uh, a saddle point. Okay, so the test fails if d equals 0, and you could put that there. Okay, so uh, if uh, it's c, d less than 0, it's a saddle point. If d equals 0, the test fails, and you have to look at other information. And to remember, the formula for d, which is up here, it's fxx times fyy minus fxy whole squared. That is the determinant of this. This is fxx, this is fyy, this is fyx, uh, and this is uh, fyy. So it ends up being exactly what we want for d. Now, in higher dimensions, a similar determinant uh, is evaluated, and um, that matrix actually has a name. It is called the Haitian matrix. So use that process to find the local maximum, minimum, and saddle points of f of xy equal x to the fourth plus y to the fourth minus 4xy plus 1. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. 
and we'll see how you did when we come to the next video. Now, more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless you all.